What's going on, everybody? I'm back. This is John with ActionFlix.com coming at you with the rebirth of the weekly Intel. Um, I've been MIA. Yes, I have. I mean, if you've been following my website, I've been back. I have gotten back to writing. Um, I did a bunch of reviews. Um, I've done a bunch of trailer posts, a bunch of Intel reports. Um, but the podcast has been non-existent. And I'm going to do a little explanation here at the beginning and then just leave it at that. Um, as you all know, or most of you know, that I moved down to Panama City Beach uh, in late September of last year. I moved down with my family. And I had done a whole bunch of podcasts uh, from there. Um, to make a long story short, things have not worked out. Um, and I'm on my own. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but I do have my beautiful daughters and, and I have my website. So now I am back with the weekly Intel and this is the very first episode of the brand new weekly Intel. As you can see, I'm back on YouTube and StreamYard and I got my logo and everything's all a go. So before we get started, I just want everybody to know, um, to check out my website at actionflix.com. That's action-flix.com. And if you have noticed, for those of you to follow, I had changed the platform again, um, kind of like a, you know, again, a rebirth, um, you know, a phoenix rising out of the ashes, if you will. And don't forget, if you haven't already, to like and subscribe because, you know, again, I'm trying I'm trying to get followers. I'm trying to get all you guys out there and gals out there who, who love action cinema to follow me. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that everybody is updated with the weekly action news as well as trailers. Um, I haven't done an interview and I do not know when. I've had a couple opportunities to do interviews, but they have not panned out. Um, either because of something on their end or because of my uh, personal situation. But hopefully I'm going to be getting back to that too. And I just want to talk. So this is the weekly detail. So biggest thing I'm going to do today, um, it's not going to be a long one. I'm just going to talk about some of the biggest things that have come up in the world of action cinema. And uh, yesterday, I, I was late to the party. I, I actually just put this up on actionflix.com. Um, about an hour ago. So if you check it out, it's on there. Um, there's the man, Donnie Yen. That's right. Action and martial arts icon, Donnie Yen, who, as you can see in a scene from Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which he was awesome in. Um, I know the, the fight scene with him and the stormtroopers was much maligned because people picked it apart for certain reasons, but I think they had pulls up their asses or uh, Donnie Yen's pull up their ass because that was freaking awesome. One of the best, my favorite Star Wars fight scenes ever. But enough about that. Um, Donnie Yen has enlisted to star in the remake of Kung Fu. As we all know, Kung Fu is the classic 70s TV series that starred the late, great David Carradine as a wandering monk who escaped China and traveled the West in the United States, early United States, helping people out innocent people downtrodden who were afflicted by, you know, evil. Um, and he would use his martial arts abilities to, to help out. Well, Donnie Yen is going to play the lead in 87 Norse production of Kung Fu, which is going to be tentatively now. Uh, Dave, David Leach, as we all know, is the co-creator of the John Wick franchise, as well as other movies like Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw, um, Bullet Train. He's going to uh, helm it, as we know right now, which bodes well. So a lot of times people are kind of iffy about remakes, but if you're not excited about Donnie Yen teaming with David Leach in 87 North and 87 11, um, y you're not an action fan because I think that they're going to have something really special here with that. Um, the biggest thing, and I want to read uh, my article um, a little bit to you, um, Donnie Yen, uh, David Leach, I'm sorry, had made a, a comment about Donnie Yen and he said, Donnie Yen is both an immensely talented actor and an action film legend. And it is a privilege to have a true martial arts master leading this global film with Donnie in place as our leading man. It will be a thrill to collaborate with them, our creative partners and universal in reimagining this beloved story for the big screen. Yes. So once again, Donnie Yen, there he is again from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. 
is going to star and do what David Carradine did. Now, I'm not going to lie. No disrespect to the late great David Carradine, but I'm expecting some really stellar fight sequences, courtesy of Mr. Yen and Mr. Leach and 87 North. So that's the biggest news right now, at least right now. I mean, it's uh, here in Panama City. It is 1210 in the afternoon. So we're in central time. So I haven't checked anything else out yet. So God, who knows what could happen for the rest of the day. Um, other big news. We got Alexander Nevsky. That's right. He debuted the official poster from his sequel, Taken from Rio Bravo, which is the sequel um, uh, to his Western um, gunfight at Rio Bravo. And... Mr. Nevsky, I got to tell you what, he's he's a former bodybuilding champ, Mr. Olympian. He's an action film star. He's a filmmaker, director, producer. He does it all. And Taken from Rio Bravo is finally going to be coming out. And I believe they said, I'm going to look up here. Yeah, July 1st is going to be the, they're planning a theatrical release for July 1st. And I'm sure there's going to be a digital release as well um, to coincide with the key art. Um, the Action Western, I'm going to read this here. The Action Western sees the return of the mysterious gunslinger, John Basil Turchin, who teams up with a sheriff in pursuit of a gang of sadistic human traffickers known as the Posse, who have kidnapped five women. Joe Cornett, who directs also. And we got awesome 90s martial arts and action stars Cynthia Rothrock and Don, Don the Dragon Wilson to go along with Matthias Hughes, who is returning as the lead villain from the first movie. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty cool right there. So let me show you the artwork again. That's the official artwork from the sequel taken from Rio Bravo, which is going to be coming out this summer from Shout Studios. So that's pretty exciting. So, um, like I said, like Alexander Nevsky has kind of take gotten has taken some knocks from people. So, you know, some of his movies have kind of been hit or miss, you know, in terms of action and, and acting and stuff like that. But he puts everything he has, his heart, his soul, his blood into these movies. And more times than not, he delivers some pretty solid, fair stuff. Um, he, he, like I said, he, he's, he's a presence, you know, he's, he's, he's still huge. You know, he's got that Schwarzenegger vibe going. You, you all know, you know, he was always compared to a young and lean Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, which, you know, he could still probably be considered, you know, like this generation's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, obviously, you know, he hasn't had the huge Hollywood films that Mr. Schwarzenegger enjoyed in the 80s and the 90s, but that doesn't matter. Um, he's got a fan base, you know, and he's got legions and legions of fans who have been following him. myself also. I've interviewed him a bunch of times on the site and i'm hoping to get him on the podcast here soon um to talk about taking from rio bravo as, as well as other stuff that i've missed you know on my hiatus you know uh do this the stuff that's been going on so yeah so we got taken from rio bravo then we also have mr sam hargrave there he is with chris hemsworth on the set of extraction the stellar netflix action movie that prompted the sequel extraction 2 which came out last summer which i interviewed daniel bernhardt as y'all know was one of the villains in the movie i was able to chat with daniel bernhardt last summer about extraction 2 and he's in the news once again because and this is going to be pretty exciting he's going to be directing a a adaptation of the hit graphic novel Kill 'Em All. Now, this is not to be confused with the movie Kill 'Em All that Jean Claude Van Damme did the direct to video one, or the Kill 'Em All that starred um, Gordon Liu and Johnny Messner, which was also a direct to video movie. This is a separate thing uh, based on a graphic novel of the same name. Now, the only thing about this is the plot, it, it's standard stuff. So the graphic novel and I'm reading, follows an elite female assassin who finds out she is going to be terminated by the criminal syndicate she's been loyal to and decides to take them out first. Joining forces with a hard-drinking ex-cop, she embarks on a relentless action-packed assault through the 15 floors of the syndicate's headquarters, her ultimate target, the boss with whom she has a complicated past with. So there you go. So, Sam Hargrave is attached to direct, so that bodes well. So we all know, you know, Sam Hargrave has definitely, you know, shed blood, you know, being a stunt man and a stunt performer, fight choreographer. You know, he was big in the MCU. He doubled for Chris Evans as Captain America, as well as other things. 
And he definitely showed that he could direct with extraction, extraction two, and he could do action, not just do action well, he could do action really, really damn well. So that's exciting. Um, now, like I said, with the plot, you know, how many times have we seen in a movie an assassin who works for a shadowy organization and then they turn on her or him and then they got to fight the same organization that they used to work for? Yeah, that's nothing new. Uh, but it's the plot of the graphic novel. And also it's 15 floors of, you know, them going up a la the raid. So, you know, it's it's not like the most original idea. But then again, with a lot of action movies, you don't need original ideas if it's executed well, you know, and with Sam Hargrave being involved with the project, this is definitely going to mean a lot to action fans and in terms of the action set pieces. Now, there's no casting news right now. So that's the other thing I put in my article that, you know, whoever they get to play the female assassin and the hard drinking cop, you know, that's that's going to be a big thing. Um, is it going to be a major theatrical release or is it going to be a Netflix type of thing? And again, you know, nothing against Netflix, but we all can contest that, you know, these movies that are hidden streaming platforms, a lot of them are made to be shown in a big cinema screen um, like Extraction, Extraction 2, definitely two movies that should have definitely been released in the theaters, you know, but it is what it is, you know, Netflix, you know, scooped it up, you know, you still get to watch it on your big screen at home, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, now I'm going to switch gears here <clears throat> and hopefully not choke as I always do. It always seems like I start to choke when I do this stuff. So I'm really going to try to, to not let that happen. But we all know that the best movie of 2024, and it's only February 1st as I do this. We've only had one month at 2024. But damn, did it not start off with a good one with... Ba -ba -da -ba. Yes, there he is. Jason Statham, the man, the myth, the legend, the ass kicker, the British ass kicker who starred in The Beekeeper, which was directed by David Ayer, who is one of the most underrated talents in working in Hollywood today. They not only made a hard R rated action movie that satisfied fans. And I've, if I heard any negative con con uh, comments about this movie, it, it, I, I guess they're jaded. I don't know what, but I mean, the story again, you know, wasn't anything new, but it, it's how it was done and it's how it was handled. It's how Iyer and uh, Statham did it. And the villains being scammers, you know, who prey on the old and the weak, you know, that, that really helps, you know, the movie and people just wanted to see these, these men get their asses, you know, handed to them, which Statham did as Adam Clay, the mysterious man who is a beekeeper who is uh, a former shadowy operative again who worked for a uh, organization called the beekeepers which is so hush hush that people in the government don't even know it exists so they're badasses and he's probably the most badass out of all of them um, well good news and this was announced a little while ago because i had already made an article for it but uh, levan's trade which is a new movie which is based on a novel of the same name um, David Iyer and Jason Satham are going to collaborate on this one. And this is going to, but it's, it, well, the thing is it was acquired by M Amazon MGM and that was last week's news. But the good news is it's it, not like uh, Roadhouse, which I'm going to talk about in a couple minutes. This one's going to get a theatrical release. So that's good news right there. Um, and action icon Sylvester Stallone wrote the, uh, well, adapted the screenplay from the novel, which was written by Chuck Dixon. And they are going to once again, hopefully deliver what they did to the beekeeper. Now I'm, I'm definitely going to assume that we're going to get a sequel to the, to the beekeeper because that movie has now crossed over a hundred million worldwide at the box office. And it wasn't number one, the first week out because the mean girls remake, I don't know how beat it probably because it was PG 13 as you know, this was a hardware rave movie, but last week the beekeeper was number one at the U S box office. So not only is it number one now at the U S box office, it is a whole, Number one at the worldwide box office. So yeah, we're gonna get a sequel to it, and I I can I cannot wait because that was one hell of a movie. Statham was at his best. It's my favorite Statham movie, bar none. And you all know that I am a diehard Jason Statham fan. I don't care that he plays the same character in all of his movies. I mean, it, it is what it is. That's who he is. That's that's what he does. That's his strength. That's his superpower. He's a stoic British badass 
who kicks the living shit out of bad guys, you know, whether he's on the Expendables team or he's by himself. So <laughs> I've always been a huge fan ever since the Transporter came out. And I will always be a huge diehard Jason Statham fan. Jason, if you ever hear this, I would love to interview you for the podcast. Oh, my God, that would be a dream come true. But uh, LeVon's trade, you know, and let me read you the the synopsis to this. Um, Statham stars is LeVon Cade, who left his profession. Again, this is kind of like Beekeeper-esque, who left his profession behind him to go straight and work in construction. He wants to live a simple life. Again, he's he's given. So this could go, <laughs> if you want, you could call it the construction worker, you know, because we're all making fun of all these movies that have, you know, regular menial job titles for the title. You got the beekeeper, you got the bricklayer that start Aaron Eckhart. You got the movie, The Painter, which I did not know about. And I actually just watched the trailer for that yesterday or the day before. And it looked pretty damn good, but that's called The Painter. So you could call this one, The Construction Worker. But good, they're not going to because that would just be a joke in itself. But it's called LeVon's trade. But he he wants a simple life for his daughter. But when his boss's teenage daughter, Jenny, vanishes, he's called upon to reemploy those skills that made him a legendary figure in the shadowy world of black ops. That's right. He's not only an ex operative he's a black ops operative and that's how you know he's badass to the boat his hunt for the missing college dude takes him deep into the heart of a sinister criminal cons conspiracy creating a chain reaction that will threaten his new way of life there you go so yes so david ayer jason statham from a script adapt adapted by Sylvester Stone. You all know Sylvester Stone wrote Homefront, which starred Jason Statham. So his Expendables co-star, this isn't the first time, you know, that uh, Statham is going to star in a movie that was uh, written. I mean, it's from a book, so it, this one's adapted, but uh, Stallone did the screenplay from the book. So yeah, so that that's pretty damn cool. So that's, that, that's another big thing. Um, another big piece of news that came out is we got this movie that came out um uh, that and i'm happy about this movie and i'm gonna tell you guys why um he henry cavill got a super raw deal when it comes to being superman he was awesome as superman and i i don't care what you say i like the Zack slayer movies i think justice league his version of Zack Zack slayer's justice league is one of my top three all-time favorite superhero movies and i know some people will come at me about that and i'm a diehard superhero fan i've been collecting comics since i was five so don't even come at me with that don't say i don't know anything um you're allowed to like you know old school superman and new school superman but he stars in the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare which is from guy ritchie and guy ritchie has been tearing it up in action of late we all know that he did wrath of man with jason statham and then um he did operation fortune with jason statham and now he's this has a pretty great cast it's got cavill it's got uh eliza gonzalez as we all know who biggest thing was ambulance that she did with jake gyllenhaal which again i'm going to talk about in a couple minutes here um and not only that so so let me show you a couple, couple, couple picks here. So there's Eliza Gonzalez rocking, you know, the old school World War II German machine gun. But we got this guy in it. Yeah, that's right. Alan Richen, Reacher himself, who's blowing up because of Reacher. The man is huge to begin with. Um, but yeah, he is a true bona fide star now, action star after starring in two seasons of Reacher. And he stars along with Cavill in this movie as one of his uh, Cavill's... Um, troops you know this is the beginning this is in world war ii when special ops was first created um it's got action it's got excitement it's got humor it's got that guy Ritchie humor um the trailer knocked me out i was like yes i'm in it let's do it um i think cavill is doing some different stuff and i hope all the we all know he's gonna be in the highlander remake um from chad stahusky so you know if he's not gonna be superman anymore more power to him doing all this other stuff so yeah, uh, Reacher himself is starring in it, and I cannot wait. So that's pretty big news right there. Um, and then we got uh, Monkey Man from Dev Patel and Jordan Peele. Dev Patel, as we all know, Slumdog Millionaire. Um, not the first person or actor you would think of when you think of an action movie, but then they released this trailer for Monkey Man, which pretty much knocked everybody for a loop. And let me tell you, this movie, it's got Fight Club. It's got John Wick style going for it. It oozes, you know, those two films. 
Um, the plot for this one, it, and it, again, it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's inspired by the legend of a Hanuman, an icon embodying strength and courage. Monkey Man stars Dev Patel as Kit, an anonymous young man who ekes out a meager living in an underground fight club where night after night, wearing a gorilla mask, which you know is pretty cool, he is beaten bloody by more popular fighters for cash. After years of supposed rage, Kid discovers a way to infiltrate the enclave of the city's sinister elite. As his childhood trauma boils over, his mysteriously scarred hands unleash an explosive campaign of retribution How, if that doesn't get you excited to settle the score with the men who took everything from him. Yes. So we got Dev Patel who is now... Uh, channeling john wick and if you watch the trailer which i'm sure you did if you're an action fan you've seen the trailer he the the scenes look awesome i mean and i don't want to say like because you know the thing is now with action you know the john wick is the flavor now so a lot of people you know imitation is the sincerest form of flattery but i i think this is going to do its own thing as well you know, like I said, it, it, it's Fight Club meets John Wick. You know, it's oozing that charisma right there. And you got Dev Patel. And I love when somebody who's not known for action comes out and totally blows everybody away. Now, just with the dramatic aspect of it, because we all know he could do the dr drama. You know, he's a dramatic actor. But at the same time, now he's going to be kicking ass. And if this movie does well, and it, it, I mean, in terms of, you know, action, he there might be a future for him as an action star. So so that's pretty damn cool, too. So yeah, so we got Monkey Man and um, Monkey Man, which it comes out um, April 5th. So this spring. Yep. So we still got a few months away for that one. But I, I said this is Bollywood action without the dance numbers because I love Bollywood action. It's over the top. You know, you got Tiger Shroff and, you know, and all that good stuff. But I can't get over the dance numbers. I, I just fast forward. I'm like, yeah, let's get back to what we were watching before. So this is like Bollywood without the dance numbers. Um, so that's the biggest thing going on in action right now. So we got um, we have. Donnie Yen starring in the remake of Kung Fu. We got Sam Hargrave doing Kill 'Em All. We got Henry Cavill and Reacher himself, Alan Richin, in the new movie from Guy Ritchie. And we got Jason Statham and David Iyer teaming up again for LeVon's Trade. And we got Monkey Man with Dev Patel. Now, let me talk about Roadhouse, okay? So, yeah, so I'm going to talk about Roadhouse because here's the thing. We all know that Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze is one of the most influential action movies of the 80s. Um, and the trailer came out last week with um, Jake Gyllenhaal. We all know Jake Gyllenhaal is the new Dalton. Um, and here's the thing with that. I think that, again, they're saying this is a reimagining. So this isn't a remake. It, it's not going to be like, be like the same thing in terms of um, you know, they're going to do like a shot for shot, um, remake of it. And, um, which is good because they should, but if you watch the trailer, it looks fun. It looks good. And you got Conor McGregor, who's going to be doing the Marshall Teague thing. You know, we all know Jimmy Reno was Marshall Teague, uh, or Marshall Teague was Jimmy Reno in the original one. And a lot of people are complaining about the MMA element in it, which I don't know why, because, you know, if you do MMA on screen, well, it, 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 it's pretty solid. Um, and I'm excited for it. Now, if you all remember when this was first announced, I wrote a scathing post about it when I announced it. And I was like, why? Why, 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 why? And then I'm like, why not? Um, the only thing that I don't like about this movie is this, the cast is, you know, besides him and Conor McGregor, and a lot of people hate Conor McGregor, and I get it, you know, because he he's an acquired taste. You know, he leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths, but it is what it is in terms of his personal life and, you know, attitude. But this looks fun. Jake Gyllenhaal looks he won. He's jacked. He looks like he trained his ass off for it. He looks like he's going to deliver the action set pieces that, and it just looks bigger and badder. It's a reimagining. And I'm excited. The only problem I have, and Doug Lyman, the director had a huge issue with this because when he signed on to direct this movie, um, he thought that Amazon and MGM were going to release this in the theaters, but nope, it's coming just to Amazon prime video in March. So he's pissed off. He's he, he wasn't going to go to the premiere at uh, one of the film festivals that the movie's showing in before it hits Amazon, which I think is a crime. I think this movie needs to be on the theater screens, but it's not. I mean, we're still going to see it. And again, you know, I personally, with remake, remakes, I, I don't mind remakes if they're done well. 
I'm such a movie fan that, you know, I, I enjoy it all. <laughs> and if it's, you know, I, you know, I am what I am, you know, I, I I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and defend myself, you know, and, and things, but I mean, if it's done well, I mean, I don't, it's not like I'm pissing on the original because the original is, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a classic, it's a call classic, you know, then obviously it doesn't have, it didn't have the budget that this one had. So, um, I'm excited for it. And, it, you know, and it's another action movie to watch. And we all know 2024 is going to suck because of the writer and actor strike that hit us last year. Um, so there's not a lot of stuff like the summer sucks besides Deadpool three. It's like, mm, there's like nothing coming out at all. Um, like literally nothing coming out whatsoever in term. I mean, there is, but there isn't, I mean, this is going to be a dry year. Let me tell you a, a very dry year. And, um, I, I, you know, you got to take what you can get. And I think this is going to be, I think Roadhouse is going to become more popular because it's probably going to hit a bigger audience because of the strike and it affecting cinema re releases for 2024. You know, kind of like what COVID did um, when that all happened. So there you go. So that's the weekly Intel for this week. Um, like I said, I apologize for being gone for so long. And, you know, like I said, all I can say is I've had a lot of personal stuff going on and it hasn't been fun by any stretch of the imagination, but it is what it is. But I'm, I'm trying to get to the other side. And like I said, people told me, you know, John, you got to do your website, keep doing your website, do your podcast, you know, get back out there, get back on the horse. And, and that's what I'm trying to do right now. I got my boy Snake Eyes. You can see him right behind me. You got the poster and you got uh, him with Timber here in the back. Um, uh, he's like he's like my spiritual animal right now. But it, it's been hard. Let me tell you. I got down here and expecting one thing to totally happen and I, a complete 180 happened. And I was not ready for it. And it hit me over the head like blunt force trauma. And I'm not going to lie. I went to some dark places and it wasn't fun. Um, but I'm slowly climbing out of it, you know, for my daughters and everything. And I just want to thank all you guys and gals that, uh, supported me, you know, through it all. I won't forget it at all. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Like I said, hit the button on the bottom. I think I'm almost up to 600, which is kind of cool. I think I'm at five, seven something. So, yeah. So, you know, we all know it's like, it, it's a subscriber game, you know, and, and I, I want to do this, you know, but it costs money, you know, and I, I and I'm single now. <laughs> And, you know, it's like, I, 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 I'm on a, you know, so doing the website costs money, doing this stuff costs money, you know, and I'm trying my best, but it is what it is. And this is like, this is my therapy, you know, and I neglected it for too long and I got to stop doing it and feeling sorry for myself and getting back out there. I mean, and my shoulder, as you can see, I'm wearing another sling right now. I've been out of work for a couple of weeks. Work's been great. They've been great, you know, helping me, you know, but I got to see an orthopedic surgeon next week again. And I just, I'm not having fun with it at all. So that's another thing that I've had on my plate. So just to give you some reference about why, you know, it's been so long since I've done a podcast. Um, I haven't done my Spotify podcast in for I, almost a year, probably. So, but yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to focus on the YouTube thing right now and then um, probably trans and transfer it over to the, to Spotify, you know, so that way people on Spotify can listen to it too. The only thing is you won't get the visuals, you know, that you get on here on the, on the YouTube channel. Um, so again, thank you for everybody. Um, this is John from Panama city, you know, trying to live every day, you know, every day you wake up is a good day. You know, even if it, you know, even on the days that I've had, um, you know, it's a godsend when you wake up and I get to pick my daughter up in a little bit and, you know, God bless her. She's eight years old. And my, uh, I actually, you know, I have three daughters, you know, two are technically my stepdaughters, although I call them my daughters because I've raised them. Um, my 16 year old, you know, she's doing so great in school. She's got such a great head on her shoulders and she's got a job and she's kicking ass down here too. But, and Bailey is a, and she is just awesome. She keeps me going. Her smile just makes me just want to be a better man. That's all I'm going to say. Before I start crying on, on the weekly Intel, which is not what you want to do when you do an action cinema podcast, but that's it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I just wanted to give you guys a frame of reference. You know, I mean, my shoulder's still going to be there. 
Um, it's still there. Like I said, I got to meet with them next week and God forbid, you know, I don't want to have surgery again. Oh my God. I, I cannot go through that again because that is, oh my. but it's, it, it got screwed up again and I haven't been able to use it. And my job's a physical one and, and stuff like that. So, um, like I said, like, and subscribe, uh, follow me, um, support actionflix.com. And again, action-flicks.com we are i kind of changed my um my banner if you will um i used to say your destination for everything action now it's your destination for your action fix because i call you know my podcast on spotify and this one the action fix so i've kind of gone into that route i dropped the action flicks approves it you know it served its purpose for for a while but you know i, I got rid of that as you know my my last reviews um uh, because if you notice on, on my website um i've done reviews uh i've done a lot of reviews actually within the last couple of weeks because there's been so many action movies that came out whether it was at the cinemas or um uh, direct to video or, 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 or streaming. So I did one in man with Dolph Lundgren, one more shot with Scott Atkins, you know, which is the sequel to one shot, which is freaking stellar too. Of course the beekeeper I did. Um, I did blind war, which, um, stars Andy on, which is a high uh, original. And of course I did the bricklayer. So yeah, so check all that out. And of course more are going to be coming. I'm going to check out the painter. Um, and I believe, uh, shoot, hang on. I should have, I should have done my homework before I got on air. Um, but it's got John Voight in it. Y'all know John Voight. He's an icon. He, you know, he's still alive and kicking. And um, he, you know, elevates a movie. Even if he's only in it for like two minutes. He's one of those actors that that um, makes a movie better just by walking in the freaking door. You know, it's just like, um, yeah, Charlie Weber. That's right. Charlie Weber. Um, that's his name. And um he, he, I mean, he's, he's sporadic, you know, I mean, he's not a, a big known person per se. Um, but he was, here's the biggest thing he was in. Yes. He's the Charlie Weber. I was thinking, I was just making sure he was in Jarhead three, the siege, one of the Jarheads direct to video sequels. And he was in it uh, with Scott Atkins who only had a minor role in it. Um, which came from the great William Kaufman, director, filmmaker, William Kaufman, as we all know, is one of the best independent action cinema filmmakers around. Um, had a great year last year uh, with the channel. One of the uh, one of my best action movies of 2024, as well as Shrapnel. Um, that was another kick-ass movie. Um, yeah, so he starred in Jarhead 3, The Siege. So now he's in The Painter, which is another, you know, job title action movie because we got the bricklayer we got the beekeeper we got the painter now we got the construction worker which i'm kidding it's levon straight but i'm gonna call it the construction worker because why the hell not yeah so i'm gonna check that one out because i watched the trailer and there's this one scene in the trailer where he's kind of doing like a gun fu thing like he's going after this guy and like he's like circling and the gun's going around and shooting and stuff like that i was like I go, yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, got the equilibrium John Wick thing going. But who? If it, I don't care. I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, like I said, imitation is a sincere form of flattery. And, you know, and it looks pretty solid. I don't know how it escaped me and got under my radar, but I'm definitely going to check it out and do a uh, review for it. Uh, the Painter with Charlie Weber and John Boyd. So how can you not beat that? Um, so, yeah. So, uh Hang on a second. Let me get uh, before I go, because um, I wasn't uh, preparing to talk about it, but I am going to uh, uh, download the uh, original key art for it. So just give me two seconds here when that happens. And um, yeah, so sometimes movies get past me. Like I said, I've had I've been distracted from <clears throat> since October possibly i think <laughs> so yeah so that's the thing um i just want um i i it, it's hard to really explain um but i i just you know <clears throat> i just want to be a, a, a like a, like a good father and and everything and just 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 um 
just be a good person, you know? And like I said, I, I did a lot of stupid things. Um, I'm getting the key art for you here. Hang on. Just bear with me one second. Um, and I'm going to show it to you. And, 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 you know, when stuff happens that you're well, one, when you're expecting one thing to happen, when you move to a completely different state and the total opposite thing happens, you know, it sucks. Let me tell you, but that's all again, I'm going to put it to rest, but here we go. Here's the original artwork for that. The painter. Um, yep. There it is. That's the painter. It's got Charlie Weber, John Voight, and Madison Bailey, who I'm not particularly, uh, I don't know really who she is. I'd have to check that out and see what she has done. But again, it's a, it's another one of those, uh, he's, you know, <laughs> he's a retired badass special ops soldier. So the, 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 tri the synopsis for this is an XC. Okay. So he's ex CIA operative is thrown back into a dangerous world when a mysterious woman from his past past resurfaces now exposed and targeted by a relentless killer and a rogue black ops program, probably for the one he used to work for. He must relay on skills that he thought left behind. Again, nothing new. But like I said, the trailer looks solid. It flew under my radar, and I'm going to check it out. A um, couple other movies I want to check out. I never did get the chance to check out Hellhound with uh, uh, my man, Louis Mandalore, who's kicking it. Um, who also stars in Skyline Warpath. That was the other big news, um, if you guys remember from two weeks ago. Eco U.S., you know, Liam O'Donnell. It was first announced as Warpath. Um, and then all of a sudden, because and then people were telling me, hey, this is... This is Skyline, you know, Warpath. And I'm like, I go, they haven't said anything about that. All it is is, you know, there was a teaser poster which showed um, Eco from another movie he did. And it, it was just called Warpath. And there was no mention whatsoever that um, this was a a uh, a sequel to that that movie, the, the you know, the Skyline franchise. Um, but... And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, then Liam O'Donnell announced, hey, this is Skyline Warpath. So we're going to follow Eco's character from beyond Skyline. And now, you know, there's going to be even more exciting things happening. And I'm going to show you here in two seconds why you should all get excited. Because um, Eco is not by himself in this movie. And just give me one second. Again, I wasn't prepared for this. My bad, my bad, my bad. But I am now. Um, so um, here we go. Eco is starring with none other than his triple threat co-star, Scott Atkins. There you go. Yeah, look at them side by side. You know, how, who, who, when they saw this image, when you first saw this image, wanted to see the scene right away? I wanted to see it yesterday. I'm like, okay, you see the guys in the back, you know, there's guys in the front and you know that they're going to totally open up a can of whoop ass on these, these guys. Um, and you know, eco us's stunt team is doing the action. And here's the other thing. So now you got Scott with facial hair and a totally different haircut fighting eco. So you got them side by side and then fighting each other. So something happens where I think they're at odds. And then there you go. They team up for the good stuff. Um, and the thing is, the, the, the trailer for it, it, it's set within the Skyline universe. And five years after the events of Beyond Skyline, the movie follows Sua, U.S., who, as he leads the resistance against the aliens. When he discovers the powerful alien radio gauntlet, he must deal with both the corrupt Eric, played by Scott Atkins, and the army of alien Vader. So it says corrupt Eric. So, okay, so... Is he bad? Is he good? Is he bad at first? Then he becomes good? I'm so intrigued. It's like, but obviously they're side by side. So you're not side by side, you know, watching each other's backs if you're not on the same team. So something happens. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to Mr. O'Donnell and be like, <laughs> pick, pick, your, pick his brain and be like, is he bad at first? And then they fight and have this really awesome fight scene where they, they kick the shit out of each other. And then, you know, he gets a haircut and shaves his face and then they be, he, be, he becomes a good guy again. So we'll have to wait and see and have to wait for the trailer and all that. So it just finished uh, production. Um, Liam announced that they had finally wrapped production on it. So it's going to be a while before we see anything because now they're going into post. So, yeah. So that's the other big news that I that I couldn't leave out because uh, I hadn't done a weekly intel for a while. All right, so a lot of good stuff coming up. All right, this is John with the bad shoulder. I'm single again. So again, <laughs> any ladies in the Panama City area, if you want to mingle, here I am. I'm a catch. Let me tell you, I got, you know, 
<laughs> I got a bad shoulder, but what else? What are you going to do? And I love and a love of action cinema. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to try to hook up with people. As you know, I've been doing my friend Owen and the Action Elite, his website. I've been doing the War Room with him. Um, I, I've managed to do the last the three uh, War Rooms. Um, last night we did Die Another Day. Um which was Pierce Brosnan's last turn as James Bond. And I'm not a big James Bond fan. I'm a casual James Bond fan, but I was, I had fun talking about it. And of course we talked about Reacher uh, season two of Reacher. We had a lot of fun um, doing that as well. Um, so yeah, so I've been back on that show having a good time. It's always fun to hang out with Owen, J man, uh, Steven, Sean, um, Charlie, my man from give me back my action movies and give me back my, um, my, um, uh, horror movies. Um, so yeah, so it's always a pleasure to be on that show. And again, that fat samurai guy, not that he needs help from me to <laughs> advertise for him because he's got way more followers than I do, but I was actually supposed to be on his show last week where they did the verses. I don't know if you saw where they did the Ray two versus, um, John Wick chapter four, and I was supposed to be on it. And of course, life interferes <laughs> like no it's this in my life and i was not able to do it so i apologize to samurai and i i hope and i hope we hook up again for some good stuff in the future um but again check out that fat samurai guy and he, his youtube channel he's doing he's been interviewing everybody left and right he always says that you know i have all, you know he's like he's like i gotta get the people you interviewed i'm like yeah but i haven't interviewed anybody in like since last summer <laughs> so i can't uh, here let me get okay let me go on here all right the last person i interviewed because i can't even remember Member because it's it's been a while and I've had a lot of um, um, shit going on. The last person I did was Daniel Bernhardt. That's right. Yep. So I have was I was going pretty good. Um, if you if you see, I had done Marcos the Roar twice. I did Art Camacho. Um, I did Andy Allo, who was on Chicago Fire. Um, I did Michael Pere in the cast of the awesome um, Space Quest or uh, Space Wars Quest for the Deep Star, which was an indie sci-fi movie. I did um, Camille Delamar, who who uh, directed um, Assassination Games that starred Henry Golding. I did Ch Ch Chel Sa Ch Chel Sonnen, you know the MMA guy who did Mojave Diamonds. I did Sheldon Lettage for God's sakes, you know the big Sheldon Lettage who directed Lionheart and all that good stuff. Um, I did Johnny Strong from Warhorse One. I did both Max Martini and Clean Crawford from um, the Channel. I did William Kaufman, the director of the Channel. I did freaking Johnny Rico himself, Casper Van Dien, and then I did Daniel Bernhardt. And then I was busy with the move and then my life tore to shit. And now here I am on the other side. of it. So hopefully I get some more interviews going on and I'm talking too long again. But like I said, it's been a long time. So I've had a lot of stuff to talk about. So hopefully you guys check out this podcast and check out everything that I'm going to be doing from now on and all the people I'm going to be hooking up with and on their channels too. All right. So don't forget to check out my website at action-flicks.com. We are your destination for your action flicks. And please don't forget to like and, and subscribe. Um, my daughter watches all these YouTube channels that I can't stand. Oh my God, they're so annoying. But they have like millions of followers. And I'm like, wow. I go, you know, how, how do I have to have like, you know, like eight, 18 kids or something, you know, or, you know, stuff like, or, or do Barbie shows, you know, they get, they get subscribers. I have no idea, but I mean, like I said, I'm on a budget, like stream is probably the biggest thing I'm doing right now, along with my website. Cause this all costs money and I got none. <laughs> so, um, there you go. Um, so don't forget to like it, like, and subscribe, uh, follow me at actionflix.com, action-flix.com. Got a lot of good stuff coming up. Donnie N, he's going to be in, Kung Fu from David Leach in 87 North, which is also known as 8711. Jason Statham. Yeah, there he is. Oh, how awesome was that scene in the beekeeper at the end when he's going up the staircase and he's just freaking annihilating people. That's my favorite scene. Um, his fight scene with the South American uh, mercenary guy that came out of nowhere <laughs> was freaking awesome too. But I love this scene like where he's just like carving his way through the gauntlet. That was freaking awesome. It's on digital now. So you get to watch it even more. So how great is that? I'm going to I'm gonna uh, rent it and then I'm going to wait for it to... Um, hit of course 4k because i want my own copy of it you know so yeah so um you know jason statham let me tell you he's they say there's no action stars anymore but you got him 
you know, doing his thing. You got these two guys, hello, doing their thing. You know, now you got this guy doing so, his own thing. And you got this guy doing his own thing. You still got this guy doing his own thing. And now you have this guy doing his own thing. So it's like, there's a lot of good people out there doing action. Yeah, it's not Sylvester Stone. It's not Dolph Lundgren. It's not Art Sorensen. It's not guys who like look like they've been in the gym for 15 hours straight, seven days a week. But no, don't get me wrong. Reacher, yeah, yeah he is. He's one. Of, I mean, Jason Statham's built. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, there's that 80s mindset, you know, where everybody was seven feet tall. And it's just not like that anymore. I mean, the, you know, these guys are, are, are solid, tough guys with bravado and they kick ass and you, they just they just need a chance to shine for the audience. And I and I love that the beekeeper was a solid hit because now hopefully we're going to get these guys and hopefully this paves the way for Scott Atkins to finally freaking get his movie that he deserves to be shown on the big screens because he deserves because you know, anytime he's on the big screen, he's he's in a cameo like John Wick chapter four, or, you know, he's got a minor role. He needs to headline his own freaking movie. Well, more than one movie because he has been doing it for years and he is still not the mainstream guy that he should be. Now he's, he's big in action cinema. Don't get me wrong. He's big, you know, internationally, he's big here, but he needs to be mainstream. Let me tell you. So a lot of good things going on. All right. And so until next time, make sure you like and subscribe. Check out my website at actionflix.com. This is John with Action Flix and the Weekly Intel. We're back like a phoenix rising from the ashes. And I got a new and I got a new video. How cool is that? That is freaking cool. Um, so it makes me feel all professional and everything. Here, I'm gonna. So that's how I'm going to end. That's how I'm going to start my podcast. And that's how I'm going to end my podcast. So until next time, I got to go get my daughter from school. I'm going to hang out with her. And like I said, she's she's my medicine right now, too. And she is just awesome. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll bring her on, you know, for you guys to say hi to one of these days because she's, she's just super awesome. I love her. All right. So until next time. Lock and load because 2024 hopefully is going to be a better year. It can't be any worse than 2023 was for me. So we'll see what happens. We're going into the second month already and um, I'm trying to get excited. I really am. But I need you guys to carry me to and to help me and to, to support and to keep me going because this is, like I said, I tried therapy, let me tell you, just to, and it didn't work. Like I said, these it just made me more angry and more upset. And I was just like, you know what? This is my therapy. Because like when I'm talking about about um, action movies and and like when I'm writing on my website, I don't think about anything else. It's when I stop that's when it all comes back to me. So like right now, for talking to you for like 48 minutes, I have not th unless I was talking about you know what happened to me to you guys. I don't think about it. And when I'm writing and doing my website, I don't think about it. But then it comes back to me, you know. And then you know, so that's the thing. I got to get past that point where I'm not thinking about it, even if I'm not doing. it. All right. So I'm going to def definitely say goodbye now. Um, like I said, a lot of good stuff coming up, a lot of good weekly news this week. So hopefully next week is just as good with the, with the uh, weekly intel. All right. So lock and load. We are your destination for your action fix. This is John with actionflix.com saying see you all next time.